Good morning. Today is Wednesday, the 27th of December, and we celebrate the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise, praise you, we bless you, you we, adore we adore you, we glorify you, we, glorify you, we, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the blessed Apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, Grant, we pray, that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. John. Beloved, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life. For the life was made visible. We have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life. That was with the Father and that was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you so that you too may have fellowship with us, for our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice, rejoice in, in the, the Lord, Lord, you just. just. <laughs> the Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darknesses are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the, the Lord, Lord you, you just. just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice, Rejoice in, the in the Lord, Lord you, you just. just. Light dawns for the just, and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in, in the Lord, Lord you just. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, 
and he saw and believed the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of St. John the Evangelist during this Christmas season, oddly enough, here we are recounting Jesus' resurrection 33 years later. But in the midst of that, we reflect on the life of St. John, this beloved disciple of Jesus Christ, one who our Lord held so deeply and loved so much, the brother of James and the son of Zebedee, the first two to be called by Jesus to be his disciples. John's life in many ways was very simple yet very extraordinary. A simple fisherman who with great faith left everything behind and said yes to Jesus. The whole Christmas narrative that we reflected on during Advent and now during this Christmas season in which we saw Mary and Joseph and Elizabeth and Zachariah and so many really recognize how God's work was being done and fulfilled and said yes. And we reflect now on John the Evangelist who during Jesus' adult ministry had that same faith. And as Jesus called them to follow, they left everything behind and said yes. They said yes to follow the Lord, but we know that that path wasn't easy. That path was rather difficult, but as John recognized the resurrection of Christ, he saw and believed. That same belief was present when he began to follow Jesus, and as Jesus died and rose again three days later, John again had that same belief that same faith that what Jesus had promised them was fulfilled, that even though he would die, he would rise three days later. And for John, the story continues, being present with the Lord during his time after the resurrection and after the Lord's ascension into heaven, John's story continues. He writes the Gospel of John and his other writings found within scripture of the New Testament. And then ultimately at the end for him, he was exiled, but he never gave up his faith. He never gave up proclaiming that same hope and faith he had in Jesus Christ. John's life was difficult. He left everything behind to follow this man, Jesus Christ, who promised to be the Son of God, who promised to save them from their sins, to rise on the third day, and then to go back to God to prepare a place for them. In the midst of his difficulties, John held that promise of Christ close in his heart. And even after Jesus rose and ascended into heaven, John continued to spread that faith with conviction, with courage, but most importantly, with love. John's writings reflect most importantly the love God has for us brought forth by Jesus Christ. John recognized that love. That's why he left everything behind to follow the Lord. But in the midst of his own persecution, in the midst of his own exile, he never gave up his faith in the midst of that difficulty. We too in our lives face that same persecution. We too have times in our life where we truly feel exiled, abandoned by others in the difficulties of our life. But John is meant there to be an example, an example of faith and perseverance in the life we live, always recognizing God's love for us. For that's what gave John courage. That's what gave St. John the perseverance to always hold steadfast in his faith, that reality that Jesus' earthly life was about one thing, God's love for us. In the midst of our sin, in the midst of our own exile and persecution, is a God who always calls us back to himself through mercy and forgiveness and compassion. 
and ultimately that love that Jesus showed for John. John continued to hold that love in his heart, offering it to others through his writings and teachings. We too today carry that same love that Jesus has for us. We too, like John, often face difficulties in our life, but we have the courage to follow Christ. We have the courage in the midst of the difficulties of our life to really recognize God's love for us, a love that we hold in our hearts, but a love we're called to reflect to others as well. And so during this joyful celebration of Christmas, during this time where we reflect on the life of St. John the Evangelist, let us always hold that love God has for us in our hearts, but most importantly, let us share that love with others. Let us use our Christian faith to help those most in need so in the midst of the darkness in the world, we too can share and spread that light Christ offers each one of us. Let us stand now and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For all those who lead the church, for Pope Francis and Bishop Ambera and all priests, deacons, and religious, that we may always have the courage to spread the light of Christ to those most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in Israel and the Ukraine during this time of war and suffering, that justice may be sought and peace may be resolved, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in the military, that the Lord may keep them safe from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the suffering, that like St. John the Evangelist, they may hold Christ's love deep in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, may they come to know eternal peace in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Good and gracious God, with humble hearts we come before you and ask that you hear and answer those, these prayers, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept, accept this sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, name for, for our, our good and the good of God's holy church. Sanctify the offerings we have made, O Lord, we pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal word, just as from the same source you revealed it to your apostle John, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For on the feast of this off-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Helen Cesra, John Tallow, and John and Lola Ringden, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the, the sin, sin of the world, world have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O oh Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the Word made flesh, proclaimed by the blessed Apostle John, may through this mystery which we have celebrated ever dwell among us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.